Um, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, my name is um, Busayo. I am not a chit chatter like peace. I wish I really was. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, when I when I was coming in, so first things first, I, I was supposed to. Hamza is supposed to be here. Hamza Lawal is supposed to be here. Um, Hamza Lawal is the CEO of Connected Development, an organization I work with currently. Um, we follow the money. We track government expenses in marginalized communities. So it's a little related to governance, anti-corruption, transparency, and accountability. Um, but before I go deep into what I have to say, my time is ticking already. I missed um, Kunle Lawal's presentation. I, I really missed. I came in when you were ra wrapping up. I'm, I'm very sorry. I really um, wish to come to listen to you. Um, he's someone I, I envy a whole lot. I mean, contesting for Senate in the FCT. I, I celebrate you greatly. Thank you for doing what a whole lot of young people shy away from. Please put your hands together for Kule Lawal. Massive courage, massive courage. Um, yeah, uh, doctor, I listened to you attentively, and um, you are talking about reality, um, where we have to start from somewhere, start from. And when you were talking, when you showed the statistics about Nigeria, I said to myself, hey, we, we, the little that has come in, we have not justified it in all sincerity, and most times you wouldn't blame Nigerians for wanting more. You wouldn't blame us for aspiring. We're in a global village. Everybody's asking questions. I can be here and see what healthcare is in India. I can be here and see what healthcare is in Canada. I mean, I'm a young man. I have dreams and aspirations. I understand what it means to be ambitious. I started business when I was 16. I wanted to, sorry, 14. I wanted to be a millionaire before 18. You know, I never became a millionaire. I'm still not a millionaire now. I'm a salary earner. You know, but it, it, it's crazy when you see these possibilities outside. Why did I want to become a millionaire? I read a book, and two kids in the U.S. said they wanted to become a millionaire before 16, and they actually achieved it. And I said to myself, why can't I aspire as a Nigerian to become a millionaire and actually achieve it? You know, so it, it, don't, don't clap too much. I don't have the millions here. You know? <laughs> yeah, so um, let me just start with this um, um, story. Hamzi sends his love, his regards. He, he fell ill. That's why I'm representing him today. Um, I was coming from Abuja with my colleague, Mukhtar. Um, please help me celebrate Mukhtar. He decided to drive with me down. Yeah, I was coming from Abuja, and I got stopped by Federal SARS. And I was driving a friend's car. He just bought the car. You know, so I, I took his car, and I, I was coming. And I was stopped by Federal SARS. And the first question they asked was, Where's your particulars? I took out the vehicle particulars with all courage. I gave it to them. Where's the driver's license? I brought out my driver's license, gave it to them. He went, he flipped through, and he says there's no change of ownership certificate on this. And I'm like, what does this mean for God's sake? Oh God, this thing is complete. He said there's no change of ownership certificate. And um, I, I was trying to think, what do we do about this madness we're about to get into? Remember, it is federal SARS. Black guys, black and everything, and with guns. You know, so I, 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 and you know, the man said something that, that caught my attention. He says, I would let you go because I was actually rushing. He says, but augment my foil. And, and I'm like, sir, we're in this hustle. To, and the guy just told me, if you're not, I'm ready to negotiate with you. I will take you to our station and all. And because I don't want to miss TEDx Adankolo, I had to give him 1,000 naira. I'm part of the system. I'm a corrupt Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, I'm part of the system. I wanted to be here by all means. I wanted to come here in time. So I didn't want any delay. So I had to part with 1,000 naira to augment the federal police's fuel money. Yeah, so follow the money. What do we do? We empower rural marginalized communities. Um, uh, so, so it could be a little crazy when I tell people I follow the money for a living. Um, so I was in church one day. I wore the branded T-shirt of my organization. And a woman walks up to me and she says, follow Jesus. Don't follow the money. <laughs> follow Jesus. You know? And it was, it was quite embarrassing, you know? It, it, you know, I, I've had this so many times, so sometimes I just walk away. Sometimes I just try to convince them that, hey, what I'm tracking, what I'm following is what is supposed to be for your um, betterment. So we empower rural, marginalized communities, you know, everywhere. Now we use tools, like we use technological tools to do this. Um, it, it's kind of crazy when you don't even understand what the budget looks like of your country. 
Um, yesterday, two days ago, we were training councillors for Amak local government, the biggest, um, supposed to be the best local government in Nigeria, because Asurok is actually under Amak. And I discovered that Amak, as a local government, has a budget, had a budget of six billion, you know, in, in 2018. And this year they are proposing a budget of eight billion. And I asked myself, when I drive through Lugbe Federal Housing, there are no good roads in Lugbe. Now, what happens to the eight billion? What happens to the six billion? From your statistics, sir, you say we spend how many billion? Five billion or something for health. Now, so a local government budgets eight billion, and this money is gotten, and this money is expended without anybody performing oversight. So, because we don't want those monies to get missing, we decided to follow the money. Um, um, social and traditional media access to information law. How many of us know that there's an FOI law, freedom of information law? Do you, you know about the FOI law? Now, it's, it's a law um, by the federal government that says private citizens like you and I can ask government questions in a letter, and the government official or agency is bound to respond within seven days. The last FOI I sent to Kogi Subeb, the last FOI I sent to Kogi Subeb, I have not yet received the response, and it was last year, it's over a year ago. So just put that at the back of your mind. Okay, now, so we use m and tools, community resources, and um, so why do we follow the money? Why do we follow the money? We have a corruption problem in Nigeria. People say corruption is our biggest problem. I mean, you're entitled to your own opinion. People say corruption, if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. In fact, the mantra of the current dispensation of governance we have is a fight against corruption. Super amazing. And we have a transparency deficit. So nobody is playing again. Nobody will tell you exact, the, the exact amount a project costs. Nobody is going to say that to you. You know, it's crazy. We, we cannot even know how much the roads are being constructed for because we don't have access to this information. Um, we have an accountability deficit. So I always give an example. Um, if you have a kid or you have a younger brother and you send him with a thousand naira to get a recharge card and he comes back and doesn't give you the recharge card, what would you do? You would request for it. When you request, um, he gives you a 400 naira recharge card, he doesn't give you your change, what do you do? You request for your change. If he doesn't give you your change, what do you do? You have to spank that kid. He's trying to become a thief. Do you understand? Now, so when you vote elected officials, when you vote for them, you're actually sending them on an errand. Now, it, is, it behoves on them naturally to give you a feedback. So because all of us cannot be government, we choose a representative. When the representative goes, what happens? He should give us feedback. But we don't have that operational in Nigeria. So I invited a, a local government, um, a, a, a House of Assembly member in Bogoro local government in Bauchi to a town hall meeting. And he told me he was on leave. And this was his local government, for God's sakes. And I got to the local government and I asked them, I invited your son to come for this town hall meeting. And he told me he was on leave. And they said, hey, leave that guy. We stoned him last week so he'll never come back to this village. Yeah, so we have very poor citizens' participation and citizens' engagement in Nigeria. Everybody feels it's crazy fighting the government. My mother doesn't like my job. My mom prays for me every day. I told her this morning I was coming to local job because as at this time yesterday, I didn't know I was going to be here. And my mom just kept praying. And I was thinking about it. Why is she praying so much, you know, for me just to make a trip? My mom hates my job. She doesn't like what I do. She feels it's too risky. She feels you shouldn't even ask government questions in the first place. I mean, that's the kind of family I come from. A whole lot of us come from those kind of families. They'll tell you, hey, stay away. You cannot fight the government. But no, we have to change that thought. We have to change that thought process. We have to change the mentality. We have to ask these guys questions. They, they, I mean, if I send you on an errand, I should be able to ask you questions about the errand. You've sent them on an errand, what are you doing, you know, to them? Um, public records inaccessibility. I talked about the FOI I sent to Subeb in Kogi State, and I've not received the reply yet. Um, so, very quickly, in 2017, we worked in 31 communities in 17 states. We affected 523,000 rural lives. Our media reach was over 3 million. We tracked 1 million US dollars. This is like 360 um, million naira. In 2018, Connected Development through his Follow the Money initiative went to 90, um, 69 communities, 21 states, over 1 million rural lives, direct impact I'm talking about, over 5 million rich, we tracked um, about 3.6 million dollars. Now this money we're tracking is your money, is our money. As long as you pay tax in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it is your money. Now, so if you decide to sit and not do anything about it, your money is wasting. And anybody who is wasting your money is obviously wasting your life. So I had a discussion 
with a guy on WhatsApp yesterday, and he says to me, hey, nothing concerns me about politics. I just want to do my stuff, build my life, and live a good life. And I said to him, guy, everything you've built in the last 30 years can be destroyed by one government policy. So you must get involved, get interested in who becomes your ruler or who becomes your leader because politics controls almost everything about us, if not everything. So um, I wouldn't want to boss with this process. I wouldn't want to boss with this process. But yeah, so I'm, I'm going to end up on this note. I have five minutes, Jesus. I'm going to end up on this note. There's a young person in this room. His name is Umar um, Dana Sabe. Um, he, he, I worked with him last year, and I'm going to tell us a story about him. He doesn't know about this, but I'll take you through a story of what he did. Now, this is Zango Daji. Zango Daji is in Adavi local government. It's not too far from here. It's not too far from here. Adavi local government, close to Kenny. This is a primary school. Let me break your heart. Students were teaching in this, learning in this primary school. If you can see clearly, you'd see a picture of a guy. I'll show us on the next slide. Um, yeah, this is the classroom. This was what the classroom looked like. So compare these two things together. This, this had collapsed already, but students were still in this class. This, is what, this was a disaster waiting to happen. You know, so we, we, got, we got into the tough, and we said, hey, from the budget, we could see that funds have been released to this school to fix the school. But the government wasn't doing anything about it. So Umar took the, um, took the initiative, went into Zangodaji community, had a community engagement with these community members. This is, this is um, Umar here. He had a, 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 an engagement with these people here. And um, it was interesting. We, we came for a town hall meeting. We invited the ES, we invited Subeb. None of them came. The ES came five minutes after the town hall meeting. You know, so it was just the community members you know, that attended this town hall meeting. But something phenomenal, very, very interesting happened. After we had concluded this campaign, and I was saying to myself, I probably think I failed on this campaign. Something happened. I got a call from Omar, and he says, um, this had happened. Now, so if you look at this structure, and look at this structure, there's a big difference. Yeah. There's a big difference. Now, this is not just about the government wanting to do the right thing. This is about a citizen of Kogi State taking responsibility to ask questions from government to ensure that the government does the right thing. Just one person. Now, if Umar can be able to achieve this great feat, what if all of us sitting in this room today would decide to begin to follow the money? What if you decide to look into your environment, look into your community, there's a government project going on in your community that you don't know about. The government will not tell you how much you're spending on this project. I have seen a block of three classrooms and the government is budgeting 20 million for it. It is ridiculous. But if citizens like you and I would not fold our sleeves and begin to engage this same government that we vote into power, nothing would change. Nothing would happen. We would continue living in, in, in a reality that we may never see. Now, so, I mean, it, it, was, it was so interesting for me that I could see this before and after picture. I felt good when I got this picture. I felt like I have achieved the best thing in life just because one person in this place took initiative. Now, and this was a killer for me. This, this broke my heart totally. Now, this was him tweeting. He says, please, can we read it together? One, two, three, go. Sorry, can we stop, please? Can it be louder, please? Thank you. One, two, three, go. Now, so, so just forget about my name in this, in this tweet now. Look at it. I am proud we achieved this together. This is how you feel when you do something for your community. This is how you feel when you stand up for your community. We're having deliberate conversations this afternoon, guys. And I tell you the truth, you cannot be more deliberate than taking the initiative to take responsibility for your community, for yourself, your children's children, and for the ones that are yet on board. So please, before I leave, before I leave, um, please, Umar, can you come? Can you come? Umar is here. Please put your hands together for him as he comes forward. Please, please, you can come forward. I'm going to share this carpet with you today because I am really, really proud of him. Please, could you put your hands together for him once again? Thank you very much. Let's share this carpet together. Now, before you do the final clapping for Umar, I just want to say something to you. Now, the Follow the Money movement started in Nigeria. It started actually in Zamfara State in 2000 and, 2012 when we had the lead poisoning issue and we tracked the funds there. But today, we're in the Gambia, we're in Kenya, 
we're in Cameroon and we have a new baby um, who just came on board. We're live in Liberia. Now the movement is a pan-African movement. It is bigger than Nigeria because the African continent is beginning to understand that there is a need for citizens to wake up to their responsibility to hold government officials accountable for what they have pledged to do. We didn't beg them to contest. Forget about those people that said we were begged to contest. They actually contested because they felt they could make the change. So together